G'day guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you an example problem which ties together position, velocity, and acceleration. So here's our question. An Olympic runner is doing the 100 meter race. His velocity has been experimentally determined to be v is equal to minus 2 sevenths t squared plus 4t, where v is the speed at any time t, and t is time. Now we've been asked, find the runner's position and acceleration at any time t. So in case you're a little bit confused about what's going on here, let's actually draw the scenario. So let's actually draw the 100 meter racetrack just here. This is gonna be the start, and this right here will be our 100 meter finish line just here. Now at some time t, our runner will be somewhere along the path. So this is at some time t like this. Right? Now, where exactly will the runner be? Well, he'll be at a generic position x from the start line. So this will be a position x. Now, we can also say at some time t, our runner will have a velocity of v and an acceleration of a, like this. Right? And v has already been given to us. We know that v is going to be equal to get this expression just here. Okay, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and solve for acceleration. So let's write this down here. I'm solving for acceleration. And the equation which relates acceleration to velocity is dv dt is going to be equal to a, right? And this is a definition, and this is always true. And you can see just from this expression that to find our acceleration, all we need to do is differentiate our velocity with respect to time. So let's do that. We know that a is going to be equal to minus 4 sevenths t plus 4. That's what happens when we differentiate this beast just here. And ta-da, we actually have our acceleration, right? So you can just give me a, a time, say t is equal to 3 seconds, and I can tell you what his acceleration will be by application of this formula, okay? Now to find the equation for position, it's a little bit harder. Let me write this down here. For position, the equation relates position to velocity is dx dt is going to be equal to v, right? So you can see differentiation can't help here. What we have to do is we actually have to integrate, right? So we can say that x is going to be equal to the integral of v dt, like this. And so if we were to integrate, this is what we get. x is going to be equal to the integral of minus 2 sevenths t squared plus 4t dt. And of course, we, we know what this evaluates into. This is going to be minus 2 over um, 7 times 3, which is 21 t cubed plus 4 over 2t squared. I'll just write that as 2t squared plus an integrational constant. Now you might be asking yourself, how do we calculate this integrational constant? We do that through initial conditions. We know that um, at the start, when the, when the gun first goes off, his position is zero and, um, and the time is zero. So we can say x is going to be equal to zero when t is equal to zero. Right, this is a true statement, and we can plug this statement into here to solve for c. In fact, we'll get 0 is equal to 0 plus 0 plus c. And so we can prove the very boring result that our integrational constant is in fact 0. And so when you plug this back into here, we can say that our equation for um, position is minus 2 on 21 t cubed plus 2 t squared. And we are done. We have our equations for position, velocity, and acceleration. Now before I end this video, I want to mention that I kind of engineered this problem to be somewhat realistic, and I've actually plotted these curves below so they look like this. Now as you can see, the position one is somewhat realistic. This guy is gradually increasing in position with respect to time, as you'd expect in a 100 meter dash. Right, and roughly around 10 seconds, this guy crosses the 100 meter finish line. This kind of makes sense. And you can tell that this velocity graph just here also makes a little bit of sense. The guy starts from rest, so at no speed, and then speeds up until he tops off at a maximum speed of say, it looks like about 14 meters per second, until he gets tired and has to slow down a little bit. Now the acceleration graph also makes a little bit of sense. Notice that at the start, He's increasing his speed pretty well, right? Which is why the acceleration is positive. 
but towards the end, he's actually decreasing his speed, which is why you'll notice the acceleration will in fact be negative. Anyway, that's a rough guide behind reading these types of graphs. I hope that made sense, guys. I hope this problem really helped you out. Cheers.